Hey, so welcome everyone. Uh, today we are going to share the, our journey um, of creating an efficient plugin production pipeline with you. And uh, before we get started, just a few words about us. So my name is Bente. Um, I'm an audio software developer at Bogren Digital. Um, I also have a background in game development. And um, before uh, joining Bogren Digital, I also worked on some synth plugins at uh, Music Tribe. And this is my uh, colleague, Linus. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Linus. I'm, uh, I have a background as a mixing engineer uh, at the studio in Sweden called Fascination Street Studios. Uh, we worked with a lot of cool bands and now I work with a lot of cool code. Um, so th this studio is run by producer Jens Bogren, which is the founder of uh, this company. Uh, so a few quick words about, about the motivation behind this. So we want to uh, avoid reproducing code we want to automate repetitive tasks, which ultimately leads to quicker releases and lower production costs. And we're going to talk about our amp knob series, which is a series of uh, guitar amp uh, simulators. It all started with this amp knob called Rev C, which is an emulation of a Mesa Boog amp. Uh, and the idea for all of these is to keep the UI very simple, so the user just has one knob with more or less gain, and that's pretty much it. Uh, we then made a few more of other amps, still very simple, with an addition of a pedal on and off button to make it really advanced for the user. And uh, we ended up making a few more. They ended up getting a little bit more complex as we added stuff. So this last one has a Corey effect, which is a kind of doubler, and a delay. Uh, yeah, over to Bente for some project management. Yeah, thanks. So yeah, we are going to take a look at the different uh, development workflows that we have in the team. And I also just want to introduce uh, you to the different profiles that we have in our team. So we have, of course, a project manager profile. Uh, we have a, a plugin developer working with us. We have a producer working with us, that is Jens Bogren. So he is the one that signs off on, on the sound of uh, the effects and he's our primary QA when it comes to UX. And um, we also work with a DSP developer as well as um, we have a QA colleague that helps us to, to break the plugin in many different ways. Um, so basically we split uh, these um, people in the group into two different uh, teams and they have two different workflows. And so they can work in parallel and different things. We have uh, one part of the team that uh, works on the, what we call the shell plugin, which is basically implementing uh, the UI design and hooking it up to parameters. So that's the actual juice plugin. Um, and we also have uh, the DSP developer working together with uh, the producer to find the right sound. Um, so let's just take a look at what are the different workflows for these two teams. and. Uh, the Juice uh, plugin development is, is actually a pretty standard uh, software development process that we have. We have some kind of issue tracking platform where we uh, describe all our tickets um, or of um, features and bugs and all that stuff. And um, we map that to our version control system. Then uh, when some feature gets done, we open a pull request and CI picks it up and it's all linked together. And so this always helps us and to align ourselves um, on what kind of features are done and what state are they really are. And on the other sa side, uh, there is the DSP developer workflow. So um, that is, um, um, it starts with basically the producer coming up with um, a very specific idea for what he wants to hear in his mix. And uh, then the DSP developer will respond with some kind of uh, prototype to that. He creates a bunch of uh, parameters uh, for the producer to tweak and they together iterate on this effect um, until the producer is happy with the sound uh, that we have. So, um, yeah, now that we have looked at sort of these two workflows, let's just uh, take a look at um, the uh, architecture of our plugins and uh, to see how the code base is structured. Um, as Linus mentioned, we had a bunch of uh, different uh, amp knobs already where uh, basically we used to just uh, copy the last uh, project and, um, and just uh, iterate on the code there, but that also meant um, 
that we started having a lot of um, different versions of the same code living in different repositories. So it really became um, unsustainable and, and maintaining different versions at, at the same time was, was kind of a pain. So we started to abstract the shared uh, code into some modules and then we, we started to add that instead into our plugin repositories. So now we have a number of different modules. We use uh, Juice user modules for these different things and, um, and then they are added into a Git repository and in the plugin repository they are added as Git submodules. So as you can see we have a, a base uh, module for AMP knobs. So that means we have some like base classes for the, uh, for the processor and, and the editor. And then we also have um, some other common uh, modules used uh, for DSP building blocks as well as UI building blocks and, and utilities such as uh, preset handling, licensing, that kind of things. Um, so these common modules we reuse across all our different plugins, not uh, just uh, the AMP knob ones. Um, and one of the challenges that we found uh, when working with Git submodules was uh, that now when we have a new version of some of the modules and we want to update that in all the plugin repositories, then we kind of have to yeah, check out all different plugin repos and update it to the, to the latest version. And that can be a little bit tedious, but uh, we try to automate that by creating a shell plugin or like shell script. <laughs> that uh, basically checks out the repositories of our choice and um, we also select which submodules we want to update and then it just um, creates a pull request with the latest um, submodule version there. Um, so that did help a lot to, to um, speed up um, this process and we have a recording of that script right here. Mm. So as I mentioned, you first select repositories, then your modules, then you type in what change you actually have in that latest update. And then uh, it will just create a feature branch for you and then loop through all the plugin repositories and open a pull request for you. So you can hand it over to QA for testing. And, you know, before using a script like this, it might have taken, I don't know, half an hour and maybe it was error prone at first and tedious the best. Uh, to do this and after using an automation for it, it, it really became quite fast. Um, and another challenge that we have faced uh, when we started working on the TreeView plugins um, was that since we were working on three plugins at the same time, it was great to have a shared code base for them. But we also realized that uh, DSP vines, they actually were quite different and they had different requirements. Uh, and some had uh, effects that were only specific to those plugins. And so we wanted to have some kind of uh, a DSP foundation that uh, was flexible enough um, for these um, different scenarios. So we started using an audio processor graph for that. And Linus um, will tell you more about the different plugins. Um, yeah, so uh, like Benzo said, the problem was when we wanted to reuse parts of the DSP but still be flexible enough to completely add uh, new stuff somewhere in the chain. It could be in the beginning or in the middle of the chain. That's where the graph really helped. Uh, uh, so to make that work, all of our modules uh, are made as uh, audio processors. And it could look something like this. Uh, so the window is uh, borrowed from the uh, plugin host. Uh, and uh, some of these uh, nodes would be the common ones. For example, I'm not sure if you can read it, but the AMP and CAB and IRDX would be common nodes that are in all AMP nodes. In this one, we needed a couple of EQs, so we could just add those. We can bypass them for whenever they should be used or not used. Uh, and as another example, here's the more advanced one with a couple of extra send effects. Uh, so they still share the same AMP and CAB and IRDX nodes, but we could add send effects afterwards. Uh, this also really helped when just thinking about how to handle the stereo and mono channels of this plugin. So, for example, in a stereo scenario, we would send both channels to a stereo input of uh, the effects. But here we can like visualize what happens in a mono to stereo configuration. Uh, so that's been really helpful. Another thing we got for free, since this is based on the juice classes, is that we could basically right click any of the nodes and bring up a GUI 
So if we have a dev, pa dev panel with parameters for the producer, we could expose them just by right-clicking. And we have a video of that. Let's see if that starts now, I think. And another cool feature is that we can also get and set state from all the nodes. So if we want to change a filter here, we can just right click again and save that state to an XML file in our case. So then we can use that file as the final settings for the plugin or just as a, yeah, whenever we want to test different settings. Uh, and uh, we also like to use some other panels. So for example, we have an, another panel for the log, which is really handy if you're working in a door, then you can't really always uh, just bring up the normal console and get the C out. So here we can get proper logging and also a generic editor for the full plugin, which is really handy when it comes to making sure that the UI responds the way it's supposed to, to uh, parameter changes. Uh, and something we wanted to mention about this is that we normally bring them up with a keyboard shortcut. So uh, we want to keep the main UI clean and like as final as possible for testing purposes. Um, and of course, we hide this stuff behind the preprocessor flags. So this would be completely stripped from the distributed release later on. And uh, yeah, over to Benzer to uh, talk about where we ended up. Thanks. Right. Um, so once we have started using these submodules um, and we have now found a, a good common ground for all the different plugins, we also started using um, a repository template on uh, our version control system. And that's also basically something that we can use for getting started on new projects. Um, so we still kind of uh, just copy paste the, the last plugin uh, version, so to speak. but. Uh, now it's maybe a little bit more standardized in the form of a template um, and it takes about two clicks uh, to get started on a new git repo um, where all the submodule uh, references are already set up and we have some kind of um, placeholder dsp and ui there we also have all the ci scripts and the installer scripts including code signing and all those uh, different things that we will need to build uh, the final product and we have uh, some kind of test suites running there and uh, a to-do list. I will maybe show you an example of that in a, in a moment. Um, but yeah, so when we start on a new project, then we would normally first uh, replace um, the DSP as well as uh, the assets that we get from the graphic designers. And then if there are any um, other nodes in the graph that are specific um, to, to the current plugin and any other uh, specific UI that we need to implement, we also add those. Um, and that pretty much gets us there. I think 99% of uh, the job is done at this point. And um, yeah, we just have one uh, example screenshot of our to-do list. And this is something that is a little bit more elaborate. We couldn't really fit the whole thing on the screen. We just wanted to give an example of, uh, we find this to be a good um, way of documenting the different steps we will need to take when we are starting a new project, because we observed that by the time we start on a new AmpNode plugin, we would probably already forget half of this. Um, so it's just good to have it documented. And uh, some final words on uh, testing and validation. So we also think this is something that contributes a lot um, to our effectiveness. Um, we use some automated uh, testing tools and validation tools. So of course, uh, some of uh, these are plugin well and AU well, and uh, it runs on every CI build, as well as we have some reusable tests in CI. That just means that we have uh, some very generic uh, test suite that we can run on all uh, plugins. Uh, an example of it could be that uh, we make some kind of uh, reference recording and um, for, a, for a given input, and then we store that on CI and and we will um, run the same recording or like feed the same input to the plugin in the current version and, and match that against uh, this like reference recording and we will see if there are any regressions in the sound. Um, so some of these tools and techniques will of course help us to ensure that the plugin stays stable and that uh, all hosts are handling it correctly and that it reduces um, manual QA time. And yeah, I think we actually got to the end. So thanks everybody.